So I've just created a new server on DigitalOcean. So the first thing I want to cover is talking about logging into a new server. I've just created a droplet on DigitalOcean, and DigitalOcean, if you don't use a SSH key, starts you off by giving you a root user login, and they generate a password that they send to you in plain text. So of course you want to log in and probably change your password. So let's talk about logging in, because there's a few things you might run into when you log in. Now, the first thing that should work is just logging in using SSH and the username at IP address. And we'll see here that I'm going to paste in my password and I will get in. Now it's asking for my current password and then it's going to want me to change it, so I'm just going to run through that real quick. Great, and I'm in. I'm logged in as user root. I named my server SFH starter when I created the droplet and I have a new password because it forced me to when I first logged in. Now if this did not force me to make a new password when I logged in, you still should. And you can do that simply by typing in the word password, P-A-S-S-W-D, and it'll prompt you for your current password and then ask you to create a new password. Now I'm gonna log out, and what I'm gonna show you now is what would happen if you get the following error. And this is what I used to get a lot. You'd get an error such as too many authentication failures or something like that, even though you didn't even get prompted for a password yet. And the reason you might get that is if you have a lot of SSH keys and it tries all your SSH keys to authenticate against the server and then reaches the server's maximum, which is probably something low like three. So if you have more than three SSH keys in that case, the server is going to reject any more authentication attempts because you've already attempted automatically to use three and it didn't even get to the point where it falls back to password-based authentication. So if you happen to hit the error where you get too many authentication attempts, you can simply add an option with the dash O flag here. And what we're going to say here is actually pub key authentication and you can usually tab complete this and we'll just say equals no and this will skip attempting to authenticate using an ssh key and will go right to a password we say i typed in my password and i'm in now typically what we want to do is actually use ssh keys instead of a password so to do that you can go to your user's ssh key and look i'm on my macintosh now i'm not within the server and create an ssh key that you use to connect to various services now the command i now use to create ssh keys is as per this blog upgrade your ssh keys and you can simply Google upgrade your SSH keys to find this page, but the command it asks you to use creates an SSH key like this. So SSH key gen, we have some flags and the type dash T is ED25519. This is a newer encryption method of the SSH key, which is a little stronger. The flags that I add on top of the command that this gives is dash F to label the file name. So I could call it ID whatever I want or really it doesn't have to be ID underscore, it could really be whatever you want, but by convention, ID something like uh, SFH starter and dash capital C, just call it Fideliper, which is just a comment that gets added at the end of the public key. It's a quick way to identify where the key is coming from or who the key belongs to. I'm not gonna do a passphrase, but you normally should. And the reason to do a passphrase is so that you still have a password that you need to use to log in over SSH in addition to the password that you have to use as the user to run commands, especially pseudo commands. Okay, so we can see the key fingerprint. If I list out stuff in my SSH directory and I pipe it to grep just to search for ID underscore SFH start, we'll see I have two files, a private key file and a public key file. Now the public key file can be publicly shown. So we can actually cat that out and see the content of that. And we have a short public key here, which I'm gonna copy here. And then I'm just gonna actually log back into this server. Now, what we're doing here is setting up, setting it up so that we can use the SSH key. So as long as I have the private key around my Macintosh here, and we add that public key to this server, then we can log in using that SSH key. So I have the private key created in the SSH directory on my iMac here, and I'm going to add that for the root user on this new server. So let's go to .ssh here, and we'll see what directories and files we have. All right, so authorized keys, which has zero bytes in it, so there's nothing in it. We're going to add something to this file. So I'm going to edit it with Vim. Let's see, Vim is Vim's on here. It is. So we're going to do Vim. We're going to edit the authorized keys files. And I'm just going to paste in the public key, not the private key, just the public key into that file. And now we should be able to log in using the SSH key. So I'm going to do SSH. I'm going to say use the following identity file, that SSH, ID SFH start. And then we can say root at the IP address. And let's see what happens. Okay, I logged in. It didn't ask me for a password because I did not add a password under this SSH key. So now I'm actually logging in using an SSH key instead of just password-based authentication. Now, another caveat, you still might get asked for a password even though you said use this SSH key. And if that happens to you, you can add yet another option. And that option is going to be identities only equals yes. 
So we can say only use the identities that I've provided, and then it will definitely not ask you for a password, which it still might in some cases if you only provide the dash I flag for the identity file. And that's basically it. That's how you can log in. Of course, we saw password authentication, but the more interesting thing here is the command we use to create an SSH key. And then we saw that we could take the public key that is generated and add it to the authorized keys files of the server for whatever user we want to log in with. Here, we are logging in with user root. So we add that public key to the authorized keys files of the root user. If I wanted another user, I could create a new user and add this SSH key to that user's authorized keys files, and I could then log in as that user as well. 